So far when we've been solving problems, we've been ignoring air resistance. But all good things must come to an end. So let's consider how can we account for air resistance. Well, like friction, air resistance is a force that opposes the motion of an object. So if I drop an object through air, it experiences air resistance upwards, which is a little lower usually when it starts to fall than the weight force it experiences downwards. So it still accelerates downwards, but at a slightly lower rate than it would do if air resistance was not present. So what causes air resistance? Well, as the ball falls, it collides with the air molecules which are in its way as it goes down to the ground. As it collides with these, it's applying a force on the air molecules, making them move. And Newton's third law tells us that, well, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So when the ball applies a force on the air molecules which are in its way, then the air molecules apply an equal and opposite force on the falling ball. So we've actually got an equation that we can use to model air resistance. So we can write this equation as D is equal to a half C rho A V squared. Now in this equation, D is the drag force. So it represents the size of the force and it's measured in Newtons. The C is the drag coefficient, so this is different for different bodies depending upon their surface. Rho is the density of the air or the fluid through which the object is moving. A is the cross-sectional area and V is the velocity. So one thing that we can do to see how big the effects of air resistance can be is drop a paddy case, which is really light with a large surface area, and a ceramic ball, which is relatively heavy with a small surface area, in a flask. Firstly, with a vacuum in the flask so that there is no air resistance. And then secondly, we can look at it for once air has been let back into the flask. So let's have a look at that now. What we have here is a perspex tube from which we can remove all the air. You can see the patty case and the ceramic ball down the bottom. The patty case is very light and has a large surface area. The ceramic ball is heavy and has a small surface area. The air is removed by attaching a vacuum to this tube at the top. Okay, let's look at what happens to this cupcake patty case and the ball in the vacuum when we turn this tube the other way up. You can see that now that they're in the vacuum, they fall at approximately the same rate. We'll replay that in slow motion now so that you can see exactly what's going on. You can see the patty case and the ceramic ball hit the bottom of the tube at almost exactly the same time. Now what we'll do is we'll let the air in and see how that changes it. Okay, so now there's air in this tube. You can see now the patty case was a lot slower than the ball. So an interesting but somewhat tragic study of air resistance was performed on pet cats in New York. So no cats were purposely harmed, but there was a study performed on the injuries that cats sustained when they fell from apartment buildings. 
And this study found that the worst floor for deaths and really bad injuries was the seventh floor. If cats fall from higher up, they tend to be better off than the seventh floor. And if cats fall from lower down, they also tend to be better off than the lowest floor. So unfortunately, my pet cat refused to take part in this demonstration, but luckily we have a physics cat here. So let's consider what's happening. Well, as the cat falls, there's two forces which are acting upon it. We've got the weight force, which is pulling it down. And then we've got the drag force, which is pushing it up. And that drag force, remember, is proportional to the velocity squared. So if a cat falls from really high, at some point, it's going to reach a speed where the drag force is equal to the weight force. When these are equal, the net force on the cat is going to be zero. And if the net force is zero, it's no longer accelerating. So this speed is actually known as the terminal speed. Now, when a cat falls from a really high floor, it manages to reach its terminal speed. So it's then got more time to prepare itself for landing. So it can relax its muscles a bit and make sure that its legs are below it. If a cat falls from a lower than the seventh floor, floor, then it never reaches its terminal speed. And when it hits the ground, it's not going as fast. And so once again, it's more likely to survive. The seventh floor is so bad because that's the height at which the cat exactly reaches its terminal velocity just before it hits the ground. So it's going at the fastest possible speed and it doesn't have that extra time to prepare for the landing. 